welcome to another flight simulator video okay today we will be using sim toolkit to uh manage our flight um we're going to fly to ghana from heathrow but because i'm using kln and looking at their schedule we've got to go via amsterdam skiphol airport hooray so flight sim toolkit or sim toolkit pro as it's called um here we are so the first thing i want to do is schedule the flight so i want to use a real world one so i'm going to go to real flights uh, airline routes sorry i'll choose klm because that's who i'm flying with Okay, so we know that he throws EGLL. So we find EGLL down here. Here we go. And EHAM is Skipole Airport. The only difference being is these are Boeings here and E170 is there. And um, we're going to be using an Airbus A320. So we're not quite uh, accurate there, but as good as we can do it because I don't have a Boeing 737. So, oh, without further ado, we'll click this. Okay, so there we go, from London to Amsterdam. And we'll do fly. And we'll do the outbound route here. Okay, so aircraft is, I've got one here that I've already set up. What did I call it? JLH, yeah, there we go. JLH001 is my uh, tail number. ATC call sign is KLM. Um, flight number. Oh, damn it. Oh, it didn't give me the flight number. That's annoying. Uh, I'll just go 4567. Okay, ignore the scheduled time because uh, I'm not going to be. Uh, I'm not going to be uh, going exactly the right time because it's, it's dark at the moment and we might want to use a bit of light. So let's generate the plan. This will generate it through Simbrief, which I've linked my account with. Here we go. That will give us everything we need. Yep, yeah, that's right, because I haven't uh, subscribed to AIRAC. There's our route out of Heathrow on runway 27 right into Schiphol on runway 22. That'd be interesting. Obviously, we haven't got a we haven't got a star, which is a standard terminal arrival route by the looks of things. But uh, who cares? We'll we'll just punch it in uh, after takeoff. Or we can always change this. I think. We can change that because I prefer, I actually prefer runway uh, 36 right. Let's do that. We'll change it to 36 right. Okay, we're not going to pre-file it with VATSIM. We're not going to use real-time air traffic control or anything like that. Um, we were just going to um, fly now. Do I have to export this? Yes, I'm going to export this to save the, save the uh, flight plan. So I can load it into flight sim. Okay, well, I didn't want me to do that then. F ah, export. Export for FMS plan file. There we go. Right, so we'll choose flight sim 2020 here. And there we go. I'll save it over the latest one, over some of my practice flights. And we're done. So we'll click fly now. There's everything we need. There's our cost index. I'm not going to worry too much about the fuel. I'm just going to leave that on automatic for now. I'll add some more realism for that uh, in future flights. So this is my current flight. Um, I've, fly I've started flights him up, but I haven't um, sort of started the flight so to speak so if we go to the connection status it's connected but i'm getting no sort of telemetry from the simulator okay but we'll worry about that later 
Right, so it's time now to switch over to Flight Sim. off realistically a gate a gate in Heathrow where's gate 330 that's what I normally use okay well we use 331 for now next door and uh, we're going out of 27 right And we're going round and down and down and in. So the flight shouldn't take us that long. Uh, last thing to do is the flight conditions. I'm, I've turned air traffic and multiplayer off because of the bugs. Um, I'm just going to use live weather, but I'm going to bring the time back an hour or so. Just so we got some light. So, without any further ado, let's get in the cockpit. Here we are at Heathrow, and yeah, this is about right for what it was like around sort of half past four earlier today in London. Uh, visibility not good, weather not good. So, there's our beautiful plane, ready at the terminal. And we're in it. It's raining on me. So, yeah, great. So, first things first. Let's um, get the uh, electrics on and the avionics on. So, we turn up the brightness first while we can see it. Okay, and then put the batteries on. Then external power. Now we have some power. Uh, we can put some lights on. Um, put the uh, nav and logo light on. Put these on. And put the taxi lights on. Okay, uh, let's turn the thermostat up everywhere to about the mid range. And then now our avionics are coming on. If we look at our panels here, see, they've come on. But there's no data because we need to IRS align them, so we need to do that fairly quickly as it can take a while. So let's do one, then two, then three. Now, while we're doing that, we will turn our APU on, which is. Oh, there we go. Sorry, it's bleeping at me where it's aligning. We'll turn our APU on, which is our electricity generator engine right at the back of the plane. Turn it on there, wait a few seconds, and then click the start. And we can check our display here for APU coming on. See, at the moment there's nothing. See, we shall start seeing this rise here. And then, once this gets up to 10, then we can turn the bleed on. See, it started moving. While we're waiting for that, see, we've got look, seven minutes to go to IRS align, so we can just start looking at these. Let's have a look, see if there's anything else we can do. We can do our, although I should have done this beforehand, we can test our APU fire alarms. And we can test our engine ones. I should have done the APU one before I fired it up. These are all new features. And then we can turn our fuel pumps on as well. And we'll turn our dome light to dim. Which is the dome light is our cockpit light inside. Because it's going to get dark in the next hour during the flight. Oh, we've got something here, but still nothing here. Okay, so... Now we're all ready for that. Let's get some passengers and luggages on. So, no smoking sign auto. Arm emergency exits and put the uh, seatbelt sign on. Let's 
So how do we get our um, how do we get our passengers and luggage on? Quite simple. Let me just switch to the uh, external camera so it's easy to see. There's our plane. Let's zoom in a bit. Okay, so what we would like, zoom out there so that we can see the whole thing properly, we contact uh, ground services here. And let's get some uh, baggage. Heathrow ground KLM 112 tree, could you please send the baggage? KLM one one baggage is on the way. Our, our um, cargo holds open and we'll get the uh, jetway connected as well. Heathrow ground KLM one one two tree, could you please connect the jetway to the aircraft? KLM one one two tree, the jetway is going to be connected. Jetway is on its way. Uh, we can, uh, while we're waiting for that and the IRS to align, uh, we should actually be able to watch the baggages go in. Look, there up goes the ramp towards the plane. And he's in. Look at that. Oh, what's this coming? That looks like a load of suitcases. And I'll start loading those buggers on. So let's just check that Sim uh, uh, Sim Toolkit Pro has connected OK. There we go, we've got some telemetry here. And we can go to the live map. can see it there and our flight plans on here so we are here and we have to push back and then go round and along and up into the taxiway there okay look at that rain though that disgraceful rain here all the way there I mean hopefully we'll be above it at some point let's look at our current flight and look at our uh, altitude so we're going to be at flight level 290, cost index 5. Okay, and if we look at our charts, we should have some charts here. Oh, yeah, on here. There we go. Now our top of the descent is there. We'll be coming down here. Obviously, we will deviate from this flight plan slightly because we're going to add in our terminal arrival route into uh, Skippole Airport. As you can see here, that's just this chart showing us directly in. But we'll probably be going across there, across above it and rounding in. But we'll, uh, you'll see that soon. Okay, right, back to the game. That's the baggage done. And we can now tell ground that we're finished with the baggage service. Heathrow ground KLM one one two three. I am done with the baggage service. And let's get back in the cockpit. Our IRS is still hasn't aligned. Um, let's have a look at the ECAM. Um, and our APU, I think that's done now. Let's click our APU. That's okay now, so we can put the APU bleed on, which allows the air from the uh, generator engine to come through, enabling the aircon to work and us to power our main engines up, which we'll do on pushback. So we'll turn APU bleed on here. Now hear that? There's the aircon coming on. So now we've got all that. That's also powering our electrics on the plane, so we can turn off the uh, external power. And that'll run nicely for us. 
There we go. As you can see, our APU bleed is well and truly on. Our IR line is in three minutes. We've got nothing blue here. So, um, as soon as that is done, then we can push back and get out of here. Uh, while we're waiting, let's program our um, data into here. So we're going to init, our cost index is 5. Okay, then we'll go to our performance. And we're going to take off with flaps 1. And our flex 2 temp, I need to calculate that. So I will quickly flick over to the website, which uses live weather. And we'll determine what our flex 2 temp is, which is how our, our engine will be set for takeoff. Here we are. So we've got the A320. We are at Heathrow. That'll give us our meteorological information. Uh, runway is going to be 27 right. Uh, runway is wet. Uh, anti ice is all. We're going to have all our anti icing on. So let's calculate our flex to temperature. And we have that here, which is 67. I don't know why these don't get calculated for us. This is our V1s, our takeoff, you know, our point of no return. VR is our takeoff speed. And V2 is, uh, yeah, you can't go back, I think. One or the other. Actually, I think V1 is you have just before you rotate. No, V1, you rotate speed. VR is your actual rotating. V2 is, yeah, you can't stop on the runway. Because there's no runway left. Right, OK, back to the cockpit. So in here, our flex suit temp there is showing us 20. We'll just make that 67. And put that in there. No, I'm not going to do any of the other bits and pieces. Apart from on our flight plan, I will do our destination. And our arrival is... ILS 36 right. And we will insert that in there. So we now have our arrival route, which we'll see uh, as we get nearer. Uh, let's just check on our IRS Align. I believe it's done now. IRS Align is done. And yes, we have a nice display on here. So, let's set this to um, HPA. That's our barometric pressure. That's 101.4 here at the moment. Okay. I think we're in a position now where we can uh, request pushback. So let's go to an external view quickly. Makes it easy to see. So we want to come back and then turn right, uh, turn left. So the nose goes left, I think. Oh, is it right? Uh, I don't know. We'll find out in a sec. Anyway, so let's start push back here. Let's shift P. As you can see there, the pushback lorry is coming up. Once we get some pressure on it, this is a bug, you see. It doesn't line up smoothly, and then it just jumps to where it's supposed to go. So you watch it now. Just going in there. Oops, see, see it jump there? Right, so let's turn, take the parking brake off. And while we're doing that, let's put the engines onto start mode and start engine 2 up. Then I think we want to call the ground services here. And we want to turn to the left. Right. 
I haven't said a keyboard uh, shortcut for that. Right. Oh, no, that's wrong. That's the wrong way. Let's go to the right. Heathrow ground KLM one one two three requesting pushback tug to steer the aircraft to the right. That's what I should have done. It's for mu musical planes. So you can hear the engine starting up. Now I want to be facing that junction you can see just above the plane. But yeah, that was my uh, stupid fault. There we go. So let's get engine two started. As you heard there, that was the uh, hydraulics. Oh, that'll do for the pushback. That's good. So we'll go back to the internal uh, camera. Let me stop this for now. Let's just check on our screens how engine two is doing. It's uh, yeah, it's uh, five percent. Needs to stabilise at nineteen. While well, we're just waiting for that, we will set our altitude for. Flight level 290, 29,000 feet. We can't really go any higher because uh, the journey isn't long enough. Right, that looks to me like the engine stabilised, so we can turn off the uh, engine starter. And let's get taxiing. Parking brake. So I didn't need to release the jetway because that's done automatically when you request pushback. There's a little bit of sun up there. taxi here in the world. I never know how much throttle to give it and I'm using a PS4 controller. I can't use my yoke really until I get my uh, rudder pedals. Let's give it a little bit more welly on the engines. So I'm going to come up to the end of this little area here. Then we're going to go right, follow parallel with a runway, and then join it. Get the hell above this range. Okay, so now we're here. We will follow this. PS4 controller isn't the best, but it's got enough axes on it to give me a rudder, which I'm using now. Use the rudder to taxi. It also controls the uh, the wheels, the front wheel, the nose wheel. I'm not uh, speeding. No. I believe I am. Let's give it a little bit of a break there. Luckily there's going to be no other traffic in the, in the air, so I'm not going to bother with that air traffic control to get landing clearance. I'm just going to take off, but we'll, we'll act like we've, uh, we've got it.
And we're also going to try auto land at skip hole as well. See how uh, effective that is. It could result in the destruction of this plane and all aboard her, but you know, it's worth it's worth the risk just to see if it works. I might change my mind nearer the time and uh, do the last bit of the landing itself, but we'll see when we get there. Okay, not far to go. We have to traverse almost the length of the runway, which is to our left. some camera view set up so as if you're a passenger which hasn't worked very well oh dear god I just break for a second now I've wrecked it they didn't work at all well did they Set the position. No, they, they were set up right by the windows. Not to worry. Right, we're nearly here now. Turn a sharp left here. A little bit of brake. Probably cut that a bit short there, mowed the lawn. But not to worry. And this is where we normally hold short. zero and we'll hold short here this is where we'd get permission and just do the last bits of configuration so parking brake on pretend we're talking to air traffic control and let's configure the aircraft for takeoff so let's put the flaps up to one degrees let's put our parking brake our speed brake and armed and then on here we will do the auto brake to max Okay, um, our landing lights on, and I'll put this to take off, and one thing I didn't do is the beacon light, so I'm ready for pushback, but never mind, we'll put the strobe light on there, and we'll set our uh, anti-ice on, because it's a little bit nippy up there, and we'll turn off our APU while we're here. Now we've got our engines running. So that's that. Okay, so now now ready. We're just going to um, tell the uh, whole. That we're just going to buzz the crew, the cabin crew. And look at our panel and take off config test. I don't know where that is. predictive wind shear thing off. Right. Okay. Let's go. Flight director on. Onto the runway. Let's get above this horrible, dismal weather. Two, 
27 right. about 50% brakes released and we'll put it to flex takeoff mode slight forward push on the stick climb angle a bit and then we'll reduce the throttle to climb in a minute what do now there you go you've heard it click the throttle's in climb mode and then we'll take the flaps off and we'll start our turn to the left to the right As you see the visibility is not not great We can switch to our autopilot. And that will continue our climb. And put us on the right heading. So let's have a quick look outside from where we've come from. Oh, we can't see nothing on the ground. Look, just a runway glow. That is it. Visibility is really bad. So let's have a look at our instruments. You can see this is a uh, this is our turn out of the uh, this is our SID, our departure pattern, which we're following. Climbing up nicely here, six thousand feet. the panel and see what lights I forgot. I think I forgot to set the nose light to take off, or did I? No, I didn't. I actually did it. Woo! Okay, we're still turning out of uh, Heathrow. But we're just about to hit 10,000 feet and the 250 knot speed limit. So, once we're out of 10,000 feet, we can turn off the landing lights. Those light go off. Right, so we're uh, going to straighten up in a minute. See, we're not climbing at the moment because we've exceeded uh, 10,000 feet, so we're going level here until we uh, so the plane can speed up to 320 knots. And then you'll see, look, up we go. Should start flying through the clouds soon. Because uh, it's a Dutch plane, uh, we're allowed to vape. Actually, I've got no idea if that's true. It probably isn't. But there you go, I've said it now. Right, we'll keep this up until we get to cruising altitude. Uh, let's check on Flight Toolkit Pro.
check the live map here. There we go, we're out of Heathrow. Let's change the map style to a satellite. We've got a better idea of where we are. Oh, we're getting out of the rain as well. So we're all the way along here. TOC is our estimated top of climb. TOD is our top of descent. Once we get near there, I'll start our descent. Down here, look, we've, we're above the clouds now. Or well, the worst of it, anyway. And what's our altitude? Our altitude is 14,500 feet. Let's turn some lights on here. Let's see where the thing is. Okay. Better if you can see the display now. You might even see the sun starting to set. It just shows you how much brighter it is above these miserable rain clouds that we, uh, we have at the moment. We set the altimeter. It's already sort of reset there. Because of the shape of the clouds, it does look like we're heading downwards, but we're not. In fact, we are going upwards, according to our instruments here. external view. What do you know? Look, still iced up on the front of the plane. Well, I've, you know, I've seen a few videos. The plane would never ever ice up that badly. It's a bit of an exaggeration by flight sim. Although the engine and the wings aren't iced up because I. Uh, I'll put the anti-ice on. It'll be nice to get above this crummy weather. Hopefully 29,000 feet will be high enough. What are we at now? We are at 119,000. Like level 191. So another 10,000 feet. Hopefully that's enough. But this is live weather. This is what it's like at the moment, unfortunately. We're in October. Oh, we're getting above some of it. And yeah, if you're a passenger, I see if you've lost them. If you're a passenger, you'd be seeing that, or you'd be seeing that. Look at that ice on the wings. Definitely put the end the ice on. Look, yeah, it's all on. All the end the ice is on. Because of the thick clouds, I think. Hopefully that should disappear soon. See, that much ice would, in reality, affect the control surfaces and affect how the plane flies. Garbage weather. Can't even see the sun going down. Well, we're at 22,000. I don't think we're going to get above the highest clouds. So, yeah, I think you've got to be at your normal sort of longer haul flight for that at 30. Uh, Seven to thirty-nine thousand feet. Yeah, but whenever I take off from England, um, I normally see nothing but clouds underneath me. Okay. Let's have a look at some other things. different viewpoint. Move the plane around here, look at it underneath. Let me 
zoom in on the pilots. There we are. And that is a hell of a lot of clouds. All the way there. Right, I only hope our, um, our landing is going to be as smooth as our sort of takeoff and departure. Hopefully, this some of this ice will melt off the plane. So we've just done a slight course change there. We've got to a waypoint. See, the higher up we get, our vertical speed drops slightly, so we don't stall. Uh, not far to go now till we're at cruising altitude. Yeah, what was I saying? We're going to see the sun set over here. We're not going to see that. We're heading east. The sun will set behind us. It doesn't look like it's ready to do that yet. Right up there. Well, we're nearly at cruising altitude. I am going to turn the seatbelt signs off. Let them go and have a visit to the loo, stretch their legs, whatever they want to do. I'll probably turn the anti ice off now. Turn it back on again when we depart. This is like your aircon in your car will use more fuel, apparently. see where we are on our map. Well, we're still over England. I think we're going to get to our the top of our climb before we're supposed to. But it's not really a problem. The problem is when you get to it too late, and, you know, you have to start descending before you've reached um, cruising altitude. And we can see where we are here. That's telling us now we're at um, 27.7 thousand feet. We've got a nice sort of trail here of where we've been. Right. There we go. Engines have wound down a bit. It's because we're about to hit cruising altitude. And we're at it, pretty much, or 100 feet off, and the plane adjusted itself there. Now it's got to pick up speed. And then the engines are wind down. I don't know why they wound down like that, first of all. Probably should have levelled off first and then did it. But that's, you know, something else that needs uh, adjusting in this. There's a lot of bugs in this game at the moment last one caused me to crash my first attempt to video this which yeah but no explanation for that I just hope it doesn't happen again okay oh well look my airspeed here is 285 knots I seem to remember there's a constraint over this part of the world at this height and if we look here Max 280 knots is here, so I think we're just getting ready for that. So, what I'll do now, save um, ball your all with a complete length of this flight, we will um, fast forward to when we get to the start of the descent.
Okay, we are about to hit our top of descent here. Um, looking at the weather on here, it looks like it's uh, going to be a bit um, less rainy in Schiphol now. Let's zoom in here. Yeah, so we're about to hit our top of descent. So back to flight sim. We will switch back to the cockpit camera. And we will change our descent to 8,000 feet. That's where we'll go for now. And we'll expedite that right now. The engines are winding down. We've got an out a downward trajectory. Let's turn these up a bit. We can see those better. We can see our trajectory is starting to go down now. There's our vertical speed dropping. And we are on our merry way down. Let's uh, extend the range of our graph here, our plan, and let's have a quick look at that. As you can see, when the plane at the bottom, we're going to hit the salute waypoint. We're going to go up and along, almost 180 down, and then I think we're going to do another round trip, and then into runway 36 right. As we as we so we'll get a bit closer, we can zoom out this and see what we're doing. So we will differ slightly from this map here. You see we're going to get to salute. Or salute. And we're probably going to go along. All the way along and, ra and round past that. So we will start either salute or sugol. We will see a difference there. Okay, we're now uh, descending even further. Um, because we had to do a speed reduction to 240 for whatever reason. Uh, this is going to be, you know, we've got another, um, I'd say, probably about 50 nautical miles till we get to here, and we sh should be sort of around about 8,000 feet by then. So let's actually let's change this to 10,000 because then we'll do all the uh, changes we can do at 10,000 feet, and then we'll go down a bit more because I think we're going to descend in plenty of time here. So don't forget to uh, click the button. going through the clouds and if we look at the external view it's not going to be that good. I think we ought to turn the anti-ice back on. Not all this works. So, yeah. All the anti-ices are back on. We're now going to descend down and I will fast forward to when we get to 10,000 feet. Okay, it looks like we're about to uh, hit 10,000 feet. So let's change our camera angle to the cockpit. Uh, I think this is going to be known as the windy invisible flight. Right, so looking at our plan on here, our route, we've still got a way to go. So, and uh, as you can see from the external view, we're getting blown about all over the place a bit. I'm just going to reset the uh, altimeter, which is the barometric pressure up here. So it's uh, more in line. Now we've dropped 10,000 feet. So we've got another 40 miles to go around here. So I will probably just drop it to 8,000 feet. 
now and what we'll do is we will put our landing lights on and we're below 10,000 feet nose light on as well on our display once we uh, get further round on our approach here and we'll um, stick the old seatbelt sign on so I'll um, fast forward now until we sort of get around this bend here Put it on the map view for this so you can see the difference. As you can see, we are uh, <coughs> turning into that sort of uh, 150 degree turn as part of our approach. I think it's time to drop the altitude down. So we'll drop that down to, uh, let's go for about 4,000. Check that that's, uh, yeah, we're starting to drop. You can see we've got a decel waypoint there, that's when our speed will drop even lower, our sort of selected speed. And we can start slowing right down with the flaps and everything else before we go on to final approach. Uh, so we didn't really see much of a sunset because of the clouds, though it's not down yet. self-respecting pilot would. I did eat a curry during the uh, cruise and the first bit of the descent straight out of the microwave but what pilot doesn't do that when he's flying or she. So we're down to 6,000 feet now. Getting further and further down towards the old ground. Still on the turn here. Let's see what we can see. Do where the airport is. I'm in the distance somewhere. That's quite, that is pretty, isn't it? Now we are getting some form of sunset. I think the airport's probably over across the water there. Uh, what would a passenger be seeing then? seen a bit of sunset there. I think we've hit 4,000 feet. We'll check on here. Yeah, we're going to be pretty much going straight now. Once we hit the D, or hit the D cell, then I'll get us down to 2,000 feet. That should be fine for our approach in to um, hook up the instrument landing system. Anybody's watching and have come in to a skip our airport on this approach, this is what it looks like.
see the wind farms down there. So we're not far off to the deceleration. I'm really annoyed that my custom camera views don't work very well. It makes you look like you're outside the sodding plane. Okay, you just heard the engines wind down, we're now decelerating. So let's start um, configuring our plane for landing. So let's get down to 2,000 feet. Let's check. Uh oh, we didn't put our seatbelt signs on early enough. Ah, oh, they're on now. It's got quite a generous pilot. Check our auto spoilers at arms if they are. Auto brake set to, we'll go for low here. It's a reasonably long runway. Barometric pressure adjusted again. Now we're down to 3000. Let's put our landing system on. As we can see on our plan, which we'll just zoom in a bit by twiddling this knob here. We're just going to go round and in. It's quite a short distance, so we're at a good height. We're well below the glide slope, as you can see there. Now this is where my previous attempt, the plane did not stop descending when it hit 2000. It just carried on and there was nothing I could do in time to recover it. Uh, but by the looks of it now, that bug has been fixed. So yeah, we're settling nicely down here at 2,000 feet. And we're going on another course, so 
correction. So we're going down here. We're just going to go. I don't know if this is classed as a downwind approach. We're going almost parallel with the runway, as you can see, to our right there. And then rounding in. So once we get past or nearer the first turn, that I will start doing the flaps. Look at that lovely view we get out of the window. Yeah, I did get me sunset after all, so I'm happy now. flaps in a minute. I'll try and think so you can see those. We'll go back here, have an hour, just check how far we've got. Five miles until we get there, so let's let's do our flaps. Let's put the oh, you can't see them there. So we really need flaps one, you can only see them at the front of the wing. But let's find a suitable camera angle. Not, we'll just zoom in ourselves. Yeah, we'll zoom in ourselves. Okay, so front of the wing. Here, yeah, we'll select flaps to one. You can see, all that's done is move those front slats down slightly there. And we've adjusted our speed and pitch accordingly. Bit of a nice view there. You can see the configuration of the wing there. You can see where the flaps are. And a bit of glare off the sun. Alright, let's go back in our cockpit. We're just about to make our turn. Back into the sun again. should really put the wind speed into our uh, landing systems. So it's at 220 degrees at 12, 13 knots, 12 knots. So let's put that in. Two, two, oh, at 12. That's our wind. Uh, what's our QNH? That is... That is... 1016, that's our pressure. Let's put that in. And I have no idea what the temperature is. And let's extend flaps again. Putting all that information in the flight computer will uh, hopefully help us a bit with our auto land. Flaps are now at two. We should start turning onto our final approach in a minute. If we look at the glide slope, um, you can see we're still well below. The pink diamond is at the top, and it's far over there to the left. Oh, is that an achievement? Well, I haven't landed yet. extend our flaps again. I want them full for when we land. And I'm almost shorter than 2,000 feet. Well, I should hope it's a bit longer than that, unless I cut it, cut it into uh, quarters. Right, nearly on final approach. There we can see the runway in the distance, and we'll take the flaps on to full. 
look here, see how far away we are from, we're 10 miles from the, the runway. You see down the bottom here, 9.9 .9 now, nautical miles. That's our last little bit here, and we are turning onto final, and then we'll put the plane into approach mode. Let's have a look at our display, if we've missed anything. Cabin check, we will do that in a minute. When we get onto the final approach, which we're going on to now. So, let's call the cabin. Okay, so oh, we are now eight miles, nautical miles. So let's put the gear down. We're on final, so I'm going to put it in localizer mode, so it will line us up horizontally with where we need to be. And if you can see the purple, that's lining us up horizontally. Once this height indicator for the glide slope gets into the middle I will put us on um, full approach mode so that will manage our descent all the way down to the runway I think it's about to happen now so let's put it on full approach mode that will drop us down and there we can see the runway there So yeah, we're going to use auto land. Flaps are on full. Everything is ready. I'll get ready to zero the throttle. But I'm going to let the plane land itself. I will just control the throttle until we're down. And then I will park us up in a gate. blown about quite a bit. And the graphics got a little bit choppy there, which is a known bug when you've got a sort of densely packed area of scenery near a runway. And uh, recording this with OBS doesn't help my uh, CPU cycles either. Five hundred feet down. Do I want to do a nice smooth landing, or let the uh, see how smooth the autopilot does? Let's do the autopilot because we're going to do a second leg of this anyway, from here to Ghana. All throttle down. Too bad. Wasn't too bad at all. I've got reverse thrusters on. Down to 60 knots. Yeah, I just went off to the side a bit, but I think that was the wind. Oh, let's brake a bit more as we turn off. Okay, so while we're following this along. Turn the APU on. Let's go and find somewhere to park. We're going to park along here. We did enough taxiing earlier on. Uh, we've got a free uh, gate over here. 
Ah, there's one here. Now, so I'm lined up properly. Take a good look above. Go forward a little bit to the end of that stopping area there. And a bit more. Parking brakes on, flaps reset. Let's check the APU. It's almost ready. start doing some other things we can uh, our speed brake is disarmed because we use the brakes manually so I'm literally going to just wait for the uh, EPU to kick in which it will do in about eight seconds a bit where you're waiting for the uh, well, let's tell the cabin crew that we can start sorting the people out okay I think the uh, we can uh, the AP, APU's done so we'll put the bleed on okay and then what we can now do is turn the engines off some external power in okay so welcome to Schiphol Airport everybody let's uh, get the jetway and the baggage going to tune ground services um, request the baggage service uh, there was, was a bug before where they said the we can't find the baggage Oh, I've done it again. Every time. I don't know what I'm doing wrong here. No idea. Okay, well, let's get the uh, jetway connection going. Skip hold, ground KLN 1123. Could you please connect the jetway to the aircraft? Here. So, yeah, luggage has been lost somewhere in transit. Not the first time it's happened. There goes the jetway. So let these miserable shit bags off of my plane. Okay, so now we can look at turning everything off. So, turn off the fuel pumps, obviously, we don't need them anymore. Okay, uh, we've got ground power now, so let's get rid of the uh, APU. I won't go around dimming all the switches and everything. I'll just do a few things on here. So I'll turn the landing lights off. And the runway lights. The nose lights. Nav lights. And the strobe. Oh. I've got to get this exactly right. The strobe lights. And the dome. Dome light is off. Okay, so turn the heat is off. And the that do that do for now. <laughs> do it a little bit so we can turn the rest off. So if we check our avionics, they're still live. AP, APU should be completely off by now. Oh no, it's still going. Still going on there. Uh, flap is still open. Well, there we go. So that is the first leg of our flight to Ghana from Heathrow. We've stopped off at Amsterdam um, for uh, yeah, overnight, I think, because we'll fly to Ghana when it's nice and daylight. 
so the APU is now off okay all the passengers have pissed off okay so what I would do now is I will turn external power off here from the ground and then switch the batteries off and we now have cold dead plane again with everything off so I'll see you on the second leg.